Hello guys, Sam here from GrowBuds and today we'll be reviewing and testing four different LED fixtures to determine which lighting option is optimal for a 2 feet by 4 feet grow tent. This is a very popular size for hobby growers and there has been an increasing number of lighting options on the market. Obviously we can't feature them all in this video, but here are a few examples that can give you an idea of the range of options out there and hopefully this helps you figure out the best grow light for your needs. Before we continue this video, I'd like to mention that we are not sponsored by the Grow Light Company in order to keep our reviews as impartial as possible. However, we do have an online grow shop and discount codes, so if you feel like saving some money and supporting this channel, everything will be in the description of this video. Alright, with that being said, let's take a look at the fixtures. First we have the access to tablet which is the high-end series from Viper Spectrum. It features top components such as the Samsung LM301V diodes and a Meanwell driver. This is a mid-size quantum board style LED and is advertised as a perfect option for a 2 feet by 4 feet grow tent. One of the most impressive aspects of this light is definitely the value for money. Right now you can get it on Amazon for $190 and if you use our discount code you get an additional 5% discount which brings the total to $180 which is lower than any fixture of this wattage using similar components. Second we have the P2000 which is the budget friendly option from Viper Spectrum. This model uses lower quality quality components than the XS2000, so I'm curious to see how much of a difference we'll notice in our test. This light is also advertised for a 4x2 area and the price point is even lower than its cousin the XS2000. It retails for $140 on Amazon, but if you use our coupon code, you'll get a 5% additional discount, which brings the total to a staggering $135, making it the most affordable option on our list. Next, we have a completely different style of fixture, the ROI E200 from Grower's Choice. This is a top-end fixture from a very reputable brand, and as you can see, instead of a quantum board design here, we have a bar or array style. This is very unusual for lights of this size, and I can't wait to see if we'll get the even light distribution that makes bar LEDs so interesting. This light, however, is significantly more expensive as it currently sells on our website for $299. Last, we have the P4000 from Viper Spectrum. This unit draws almost twice the wattage of the tree fixtures we just mentioned, so you might be wondering why we even include this fixture in our comparison. Well, the P4000 tightly fits in a 4x2 grow tent, and the current retail price using our discount code is $280, which is almost the same as the ROI E200 from Grower's Choice. So we wanted to see the difference between investing a $300 budget on a lower wattage but higher quality fixture or a cheaper but higher wattage grow light. We've tested each fixture in our 4 feet by 2 feet grid surrounded by white walls. Using our Apogee quantum meter, we've collected the PPFD values of our 32 squares to draw a PAR map. We also take temperature measurements inside the 2x4 grow tent after leaving the fixture at full power for an hour to see the operating temperature. And finally, we take a reading of the actual wattage output from the wall. If you're interested in learning more about our testing protocol, we've made a video on the subject, which I'll link here. Without further ado, let's take a look at the results. Here, we have our four fixtures hanging at the same distance, which is 18 inches. And the first thing you'll probably notice is how high the values are on the P4000. Being that this light is 400 watt instead of 200 watt like the others, it should be no surprise. We'll get back to the P4000 later, as I want to bring your attention on the lights that have the same wattage here. As you can see, the XS2000 looks slightly better than the P2000, and overall they both deliver very decent results. As for the E200, the values are much lower. However, there is a reason to this. See, this type of fixture does not concentrate light in the center like the two others, and for this reason, you can bring it much closer to the canopy without burning the plants. Let's look at the result if we bring it at 12 inches instead, which is considered the optimal hanging distance for this product. See, much better. And the best part about it is that the light intensity is consistent across the entire area. If we were to do the same with the Viper Spectras, we would have too much light in the center and very low values on the edges because of their design. But let's bring back the P4000 now. Remember, this fixture is twice as big and twice as powerful as the 2000 series, so it's no surprise that the values on this bar map are so high. In fact, this light, according to the manufacturer, is designed to be used in a 4 feet by 4 feet grow tent. Here, we're looking at 1000 plus readings, which to be honest makes this option almost an overkill for such a small tent size. Okay, enough for the par map, let's take a quick look at each fixture usable PPF. This is the total amount of par photons that are produced by the fixture and that actually make it to the canopy. 
Here, aside from the P4000, obviously, all three fixtures rank from cheapest to priciest when it comes to the total output. Now, if we divide this value by the fixture's wattage, we get a very important metric, the usable efficiency. And when it comes to efficiency, we can finally compare the P4000 with the others. As you can see, almost every fixture in this list but the P2000 would be considered excellent. However, the ROI E200 stands out from the lot in this case. Let's take a quick look at our operating temperatures. After one hour inside of a grow tent, with all doors closed and without any ventilation system, each fixture temperature is slightly different. The ROI E200 runs a little bit cooler than the Access 2000 and P2000. But if we look at the P4000, it's getting really hot in there, so if you plan on going with this option, make sure you have a proper cooling system. As for the wattage, I always find it interesting to see if the manufacturer claims are true, and it often gives us a good idea of how honest is the company behind the product. All fixtures here pass the test as they deliver more than what they claim, especially the XS2000 at 224 watts. The spectrum is also an important factor when choosing a grow light. And here you can see that all the Viper Spectral lights have the same white light full spectrum, which is suitable for both veg and flowering. In the case of our ROI E200, however, we have the white light full spectrum, so you can use from seed to flower, but there is a little bit more blue, which makes this option ideal if you want to optimize the vegetative stage of your plant. Alright, so what should we take away from this test? Well, if you're growing from seed to flower in the same 4x2 grow tent, I would say it's definitely worth investing an extra $50 on the XS2000 instead of the P2000. It will give you that little extra intensity to be able to properly flower. That being said, both fixtures deliver similar results and will be great options if you want to start on a budget. If you're on the market for this kind of grow light, I would also recommend taking a look at Spider Farmer's SF2000, which is the closest competitor. Now in the case of our RI E200 here, I would say that although this is probably the best choice for commercial purposes, the great efficiency and the quality of this product makes it a great long-term choice for hobby growers as well. Last but not least, the P4000 I would only recommend if you are sure that you can handle that much light in such a tight space. Remember, above 1000 ppfd, you should be supplementing with CO2, otherwise you'll cause more harm than good. It's also important to consider that the cost for electricity on this one will be twice as much as the other fixtures, so in the long run, this option is significantly more expensive. Obviously, this is only our humble opinion as each fixture has its pros and cons. Let us know in the comments which light you would use in a 4x2 grow tent and why. As usual, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.